Alright, in this video I want to explain and show how to find values for which a variable for which the variable would make a rational expression undefined. And rational expression is just a fancy way of saying a fraction. That's all it is. A rational expression is just a fraction. Um, like two fifths or you know three eighths or something like that. Except these fraction fractions, these rational expressions, have variables in them, all right? Um, so let me first start off by real quickly here reviewing something that you should, all math students should know. All right. In math, you cannot divide by zero. You cannot divide by zero. Here, let me show you something real quick. Everybody knows that 12 divided by 4, right, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Why? Well, if you multiply 3 times 4, you get 12, right? So that makes sense. Um, same thing here. How about if, you know, if I showed you 0 divided by 7? You know, what's the answer of 0 divided by 7? Well, 0 divided by 7 is 0. Why? Well, if you multiply 0 times 7, you get 0. All right, so these work. Okay, these work. No problem here. But if you put 0 in the denominator, if I showed you something like, I don't know, like 5 divided by 0, right, and I asked you, hey, what's the answer to that? I ask that sometimes in class, and I hear a lot of students say, oh, the answer is 0. Well, not quite. Right? Not quite, because if the answer was 0, then 0 times 0 would be 5, and that just doesn't work, right? So forget 0. And then I hear somebody say, well, how about 5? Well, it's not 5 either, because 5 times 0 is not 5, right? 5 times 1 is 5. So that doesn't work either. In fact, there's nothing you can think of. There's no answer to this problem at all. You can never come up with any number times 0 that would give you 5. It just doesn't work. So that's why in math we cannot divide by 0. And if 0 is in the denominator like it is over here, then we say the answer is undefined. If you try to divide by 0, we say the answer to that is undefined. Is it OK to have 0 in the numerator? Yes. Is it OK to have 0 in the denominator? No. All right. So that's the uh, little math trick you've got to remember. You cannot divide by 0 else it's undefined. So that's what they're asking you here. If we give you a rational expression, we give you a fraction, what would turn the denominator into a 0, thus making the expression undefined? All right, so let me show you a few examples of that real quick. Um, here's one. All right, so I have 7 over 3z. 7 over 3z. And the question is, what Va what value would this variable z have to be to make this expression, the whole fraction, undefined? Well, the only time this thing would be undefined is if my denominator is a 0. I just proved you that, showed you that a second ago, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ignore the numerator, and I'm just going to focus on the denominator for a second, and I'm going to set the denominator equal to 0. Right, if you take the denominator and set it equal to 0 and solve this equation here for z, for the variable, then you'll get our answer. Well, if you divide both sides by 3, it's probably easy to see that z is 0. Is it OK to have 0 in the numerator? Yes, that is OK. So if z, right, this is what we're saying here, if z is a 0 and you plugged it in here, 3 times 0 would be 0. That would make my entire denominator a 0, which would make this expression undefined. Okay, So if you were doing this in, say, something like my math, my math lab, that's what they're looking for, an answer of 0. All right, how about, um, how about this one? How about if I showed you m plus 2 over m plus 7, you know, something like that, and I said, OK, what about this expression? What value would m have to be so that my expression, my fraction, is undefined. Again, once again, I'm going to ignore the numerator, that m plus 2 up top, and I'm only going to focus on the denominator and set it equal to 0, and then solve for m. You would see that I would subtract 7 on both sides. These guys are gone. And I've got m is equal to 0 minus 7 is a negative 7. So look, if m is a negative 7, right? If m is a negative 7 right here, and I plugged it into this expression. Well, let's see, negative 7 plus 2, that would make my numerator a negative 5. But do you see that it would turn my denominator into a 0? And we cannot divide by 0. That's what would make my expression undefined. OK, let me show you one more example. How about in this case here? Um, how about, uh, let's see, 
go p minus 5 right, over p squared minus 5p plus 4. How about something like that? All right, so what would make this thing undefined? That's what we're being asked. What value or values, right, because there could be more than one, see the apostrophe, uh, see the parentheses s, what value or values, because there could be more than one. So far, this one had just a 0. This one had just a negative 7. But in this last case, what value or values for p would make my whole expression, that whole fraction, undefined? Well, once again, let's start with taking our denominator, this stuff down here, set it equal to 0 because we're looking to see to solve this thing for 0. And I hope you've learned already that you can factor the left-hand side. You can factor the left-hand side into p and p. Hey, see that plus sign? I know my signs are going to be the same. They're both going to be minus. I showed you that in another different video. And let's see, I'm going to split up 4 into uh, 4 and 1. And I also showed in a separate video that you can just jump straight from this factored form into the two answers. I'm running out of room, so I'll do it over here. How's that? Right From this parentheses, I'm going to get a p is equal to 4. And from this parentheses, I'm going to get a p is equal to a positive 1. So it turns out that this expression here has two possible answers. If p is 4, or if p is, an, is a positive 1, and I plugged it in, either one of those numbers, 4 or negative 1, plugged in as a p here, either one would make my denominator a 0. And that would make my expression undefined. Want me to prove it to you? Watch this. Plug in 4 right here. What's 4 squared? 16. What's 16 minus 5 times 4? Let's see, 5 times 4 is 20. So what's 16 minus 20? Hey, that's a negative 4. What's negative 4 plus 4? 0. That would make my denominator 0. Here, try it with a 1. What's 1 squared? 1. What's 5 times 1 here, right here? This negative 5 times 1 is a negative 5. OK, so I've got 1 minus 5. That's a negative 4. And what's negative 4 plus 4? 0. That would also make my denominator 0. Yeah, so these two numbers here, 4 and 1, would make my rational expression, that's just a fancy word for a fraction, undefined. Hope that helps.